and jump right into this. Here we go. Uh, first of all, numbers 8 through 12, they tell us to use the substitution method to solve. So, here we go. Um, anytime you're looking for a substitution method, you want to get one of these variables isolated, or in other words, all by itself. Well, students, let's make this as easy as possible. Always look for a variable that does not have a coefficient. This one has a coefficient. This one does. This one does. This one doesn't. So I'm going to get this x right here all by itself. So bring the positive 4y over to the other side and make it a negative 4y. So x equals 11 negative 4y. Okay. Now remember, you're going to pick this up. And because this equals x, you're going to pick it up and put it in for x, but you must, you must do it in the other equation. So since we use this equation, go to the other equation, 3x, so 3 parentheses, and for x, I'm going to put 11, negative 4y. The next is positive 5y, then equals 12. And now look what you have. You have an equation that has all y's in it. So we can solve this pretty easily. Step one, do a multiplicate. Oh, excuse me, step one is to simplify both sides of the equation. Take your three and multiply it through. Three times 11 is 33. Three times negative four is negative 12y. Bring down your positive five y, and that equals 12. Next, um, simplify some more. You have a y term here and a y term here. Combine those. You owe me $12, you pay off five. You're left with $7 of debt. Now bring the 33 over and make it a negative 33. And you have a $33 debt, you pay off 12, so you're left with um, 21, negative 21. Divide both sides by a negative seven and you get a positive three, negative. Divided by a negative is positive. Now y equals three. So we come back to this equation here, x equals 11 minus four times three. Where the y is, I substitute 3 because y equals 3. Um, x equals 11, negative 12. Negative 4 times 3, negative 12. So x equals a negative 1. Now don't forget, you must write your answer as an ordered pair. And we know it's right because we can check it here. However, on a test or a quiz, you would want to pick this up, <coughs> substitute it into both equations to check your answer that way. Also, don't forget, you just found where these two lines intersected right here. Without even, um, without even graphing them, you know where these two lines intersect. Okay, moving on to number nine. Well, right away I find a variable that has no coefficient right here. So I'm going to get that variable all by itself. This x has a coefficient. This y does. This y does. This x does not have a coefficient. So I'm going to get this variable <coughs> by itself. Take the negative 9y, bring it over, and make it a positive 9y. So x equals 25 plus 9y or positive 9y. Now go to the other equation right here and where the x is we're going to substitute this expression right here. So 6 and then parentheses for x 25 positive 9y and then negative 5y equals 3. Take your 6 and multiply it through. 6 times 25 would be 150. 6 times positive 9 would be 54y. And then bring down your negative 5y. Please do not multiply the 6 times the negative 5. The negative 5y is not inside the parentheses, so it would not get multiplied by the 6. Let's do some more simplifying. You have a y term here and a y term here, a positive 54 and a negative 5. That means you have $54. You pay off a $5 debt. You still have $49 to the good. Bring down your 150. <coughs> solving for y, so bring the 150 over, make it a negative 150, and we're left with 49y equals negative 147. All right, now divide both sides by um, by 49, and we should get 3, I believe, let's see, 20, yeah, 3, divide, or negative 3, divide both sides by 49, and y equals a negative 3, because a negative divided by a positive is negative. Now we come up here, and where the y is right here, I'm going to substitute negative 3. So x equals 25, positive 9, negative 3. Do 
your multiplication first. So I have a positive 9 times a negative 3. That's a negative 27. You have $25. You pay off part of your debt. You're still left with a $2 debt. Write your answer like this. Please don't forget on a test or a quiz. By the way, your X always comes first. Your Y always comes second. Alphabetical order. Also, <coughs> don't forget on a test or a quiz. Check your answer. Pick it up and substitute it in for both equations to make sure you get out a um, true statement. Make sure this ordered pair satisfies both equations. And there's your answer. Also, you just found out where these two lines intersect right here. These two linear equations intersect at negative 2, negative 3, right there. Moving on to number 10. Okay, we're using the substitution method. So, um, we're looking for a variable that has no coefficient. This one has no coefficient. By the way, if this x did not have a coefficient, you could either get the x by itself or the y. That would be your choice, okay? But in this problem, the y does not have a coefficient, so I'm going to get y all by itself right here. So bring the 2x over and make it a negative 2x. So we're left with y equals negative 9, negative 2x. Go to the other equation where the y is right here. We're going to substitute this right here, negative 9, negative 2x. So 3x, positive 5, parentheses for y, negative 9, negative 2x, equals 4. Now take your 5 and multiply it through. 3x, positive times a negative is a negative 45. Positive times a negative is negative 10x equals 4. Now, you have an x term here and here. Combine those. You have a $10 debt. You pay off $3, and you're left with a $7 still. And bring down a $7 debt. Bring down your negative 45 equals 4. Now, for solving for x, bring your negative 45 over and make it a positive 45. So we're left with negative 7x equals 49. Divide both sides by a negative 7. A positive divided by a negative is negative. x equals negative 7. Now we come up here where the x is. We're going to substitute negative 7. So y equals negative 9. Negative 2 times. Negative 7. Negative 2 times negative 7 is a positive 14. You owe $9. You pay off your $9 debt. You have $5 left over. So your order pair is negative 7, 5. Now on a test or quiz, you would substitute that in and check your own answer here. Would we'll it go like this, okay? So you just found where these two lines intersect without even graphing it. These two lines, if you were to graph them, or two would intersect at right here. Negative 7, positive 5. That's really cool. Okay, number 11. Okay, 11 and 11 is our last one for this section. Okay, I'm glad we have one where <coughs> we have to get a variable by itself that is not, that does have a coefficient. Okay, x has a coefficient, x has a coefficient, y has a coefficient, y has a coefficient. So it really doesn't matter which variable you choose. For me, I'm just choosing to get this y by itself for no certain reason. I really don't care. Okay. So I'm going to get y by itself. So here we go. Bring the 2x over and make it a negative 2x. So I'm left with 3y equals negative 6, negative 2x. Now divide everything by 3. And we're going to get some fractions, or at least one fraction. Negative 6 divided by positive 3 is negative 2. Negative divided by a positive is negative 2 thirds x. Now where the y is, we're going to come over and substitute this right here. Notice we, we use the other equation. So I have a 3x, then a positive 2, then y, so I put parentheses. y equals all of this here. So negative 2, negative 2 thirds, x equals 25. Now next, please do not eliminate fractions. We're going to eliminate fractions, but that's not the first thing you do. <clears throat> if you do that first, you will miss the problem. The first thing you do is simplify. So take your positive 2 and multiply it through, okay? 3x, positive times a negative is negative. Positive times a negative is negative. 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. Now, now let's get
get rid of our fraction, your denominator is 3. So very quickly, if I just simply multiply the entire equation by 3, it becomes so much easier, students. I would have 9x, negative 12, negative 4x, and 75. Guys, that's so much easier than trying to deal with fractions, trust me. Now I have an x term here and an x term here. Let's simplify and put those together. You have a $4 debt, you pay off your debt, and you have 5 left over. Bring down your negative 12. Next, bring your negative 12 over and make it a positive 12. And we're left with 87. All right. Now divide both sides by 5. And you are welcome to leave your answer 87 over 5 as long as it can't be reduced. Now don't confuse reducing with converting it to a mixed number. You can definitely convert this to a mixed number and you would get um, 1, 17, 17 and 2 fifths. Okay? And that's fine. But you cannot reduce this. There's no number that goes into 87 and 5 evenly. Okay? So you're welcome to have this for your answer or this. Or if you wanted to, you could put 17.4. That's also fine. Now let's come up here where the x is. I'm going to make my substitution. Most, most math book students are going to leave their answers in proper fractions. So that's what I'm going to do, okay? If you'll look right here at your x answer, it's going to say 87 over 5, okay? That's how most math books do that. But anyways, um, now we have negative 2 thirds times x. x is 87 over 5, so negative 2 thirds times 87 over 5. <coughs> Um, so with my calculator real quick, uh, 2 thirds times 87 fifths gives you a fraction of 58 over 5. So y equals negative 2. I have a negative times a positive. That's negative. And you get 58. I think I said 85. 58 over 5 is what you would get. Okay. Now, you would add these two numbers because you owe me $2. Then you owe me some more money. So with your calculator, you could actually type into your calculator negative 2. You type it like this. If you have a graph where you would type in negative 2 minus 58 over 5, hit enter and you'll get negative 13.6. Hit math, enter, enter, and you'll get negative 68 over 5. So there's our answer. 87 over 5, comma, negative 68 over 5. I hope. Let's see if that's right. I might have made a mistake somewhere. No, I did not. Okay, good. Now, I agree with you on a test or a quiz. It'd be really difficult to substitute this in and check your answer. But guess what? To make sure that you got an answer right on a test or a quiz, I would do it. I would do something really difficult if it helped me get the right answer. So on a test or a quiz, I would substitute that in. By the way, you also know where these two lines intersect. They intersect at 17 and 2 fifths, comma, negative 13 and 3 fifths. So now you know because 17 and 2 fifths is 87 over 5, 13 and 3 fifths is 68 over 5. Okay, so now you know where these two lines intersect. All right, numbers 12 through, um, are we doing 12? We are doing 12. We have one more to go, okay? So we're still doing substitution. Now, I normally don't like negative coefficients, but in this case, I will take a negative coefficient like this compared to having numbers. See, all of these coefficients have numbers. And this coefficient, this x here, it does have a number. It's a negative 1. We really don't look at it like that. So I am going to get this x by itself. It's better than doing ones with numbers because of all the fractions you get out. So I'm going to get this x by itself. So I'm going to bring the 3y over and make it a negative 3y. Now let me pause and say this. If I had a choice, let's pretend that I had a positive y here. There was no 3. Then I would definitely pick this variable here to isolate before before I would pick this one because the positive signs make it easier. But in this case, I'm going to get this x by itself. So bring the 3y over, make it a negative 3y. So I have negative x equals positive 18, negative 3y. Now go through and change all your signs. Your negative x becomes positive. Your positive 18 becomes negative. Your negative 3 becomes positive. And just like that, we're finished with no fractions. Now let's go to the other equation where the x is. We're going to put this expression right here because x equals this. So 4, then x, put a parenthesis, negative 18, positive 3y, 
negative 2y equals 8. Now take your 4 and multiply it through. 4 times 18 is negative 72. 4 times 3 is positive 12y. Bring down your negative 2y. Okay, there we go. Now we have a couple y terms here that we can combine. You have a positive 12, you have a $2 debt, pay off your $2 debt, and you're left with positive 10y. Next is your negative 72. Next, we want to get y by itself, bring your negative 72 to the other side and make it a positive 72. So we're left with 10y equals 90, or 80, excuse me. Divide both sides by 10, and y equals 8. Okay, now we come up here where the y is right here. I'm going to substitute 8, so here we go. Negative 18, positive 3, times 8. Do your multiplication, negative 18, positive 24, 3 times 8, 24. Combine those two and you get a positive 6, so your answer is 6, comma, 8. 6, comma, 8, now you can pick that up and check it in both equations on a test or a quiz. Also, without ever having graphed these two equations, you know right where they intersect. Man, Mr. Eric, you're really getting redundant by saying this every time. What, did you ever stop and think that maybe I have a reason for doing that? We're going to be using that thought about finding where two lines intersect without graphing them. We're going to be using that thought in linear programming over the next couple lessons, okay? So I'm trying to really drill that into your head. Whenever you solve a linear system, you are solving for where the two lines intersect, okay? All right, moving on. Numbers 13 through uh, 17, we're going to use linear combination now. So whenever we're using linear combination, we want our x's or our y's to cancel out. Now right now, if I add these two equations, they're not going to cancel out. I'm going to get negative 1x positive 4y equals 7. That's not going to help. Do you see what I'm saying? That doesn't help at all. So I'm looking at something. I'm looking at my x's or y's. Now I see the x's are the easiest because there's a 1 right here. And if I could multiply this bottom equation by a negative 2, that would give me a negative, well, not negative 2, sorry students, a positive 2. If I multiply this bottom equation by positive 2, that give me a positive 2 right here. And that would cancel my x's out. So I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by 2, so my top equation stays the same. It's really nice when one of your variables does not have a coefficient. That's usually the, that's usually the variable you want to eliminate. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times negative 3 and negative 6. Now let's go ahead and simplify these cancel. You're left with y equals 4. Now students, now that we know what y equals, we can put 4 in for y here or here or here or here. It doesn't matter. I always like to use this bottom equation here because it's, it, I have plenty of room underneath it to do work. So x negative 3 parentheses four for the y. And now let's simply solve for x. Simplify first, negative 12. Now bring your negative 12 over, make it a positive 12. x equals 9. So your answer is 9 comma 4. Okay. Now on a test or a quiz, you'd want to substitute that into your x's and y's up here. And make sure you get out two true statements. Also, by solving this system, Yep, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I'm going to keep saying it, too. You found out where these two lines intersected. Without ever, ever graphing the lines, you found out where they intersected right there. All right, number 14. Um, I see a 1 right here, a negative 1, so that's, I'm going to go with my y's. I'm going to eliminate my y's. Now, you could eliminate your x's. You could multiply this top equation by 5 and the bottom equation by 2. That would give you a positive 10 and a negative 10. But for me, it's a lot easier to simply multiply the top equation by 4. And if I do that, there's a negative 1 here. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And a negative 4 would cancel with a positive 4. So that's what I'm going to do, okay? So the top equation becomes 8x, negative 4y, 8. By the way, a lot of students forget to multiply this last number by this number here. Please don't make that mistake. I right, bring over your bottom. Bring over your bottom equation. That's negative 5x. Positive 4y equals negative 2. Okay. These cancel. 
that's all positive 8, negative 5, that's a positive 3. 8, negative 2 is 6. Divide both sides by 2, or by 3, and you get 2. Now you can substitute 2 in for x here, or here, or here, or here. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use this one because I've got some room here. So here we go. Negative 5, then parentheses, 2, then positive 4y equals negative 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Positive 4y equals negative 2. Now bring your negative 10 over and make it a positive 10, and you're left with 4y equals 8. Divide both sides by 4, and y equals 2. So there we go, guys. 2, comma, 2 should be your answer. Now on a test or a quiz, be sure and check your answer by picking up your um, order pair and substituting it into the original problem. And make sure that you get out two true statements also without even slightly graphing any lines, you found where these two lines intersect. If you were to graph this linear equation and this linear equation, they would intersect right here at two, comma two, two on the x-axis, two on the y-axis. Number 15, okay, that'll be a little more of a challenge, which is good. We have no coefficient, that's a one. So we could either eliminate the x's or the y's. Now for me, I think the numbers are gonna be a lot smaller if we deal with a three and a two, instead of an 11 and a six. If you're dealing with an 11 and a six, think about if you had 11 in a denominator and six in a denominator, your common denominator would be 66. That's pretty big numbers. So I'm gonna deal with a two and a three. If I had a three in the bottom of a fraction and a two in the bottom of the fraction, <coughs> I'm not really worried about the negative sign, what would my common denominator be? six. So I want both of these numbers right here to become a six. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this by two. I'm going to multiply this by three. Now that gives me a positive six here and a negative six here. So six x positive 22 y equals eight. Um, three times negative two is negative six. Three times negative six is negative eight. Zero is zero. These will cancel. Positive 22, negative 18, that's a positive 4. 8 plus 0 is 8. Divide both sides by 4 and y equals 2. Now, like I've said a hundred times, you can substitute this 2 in for this y or this y or this y or this y. I'm going to use this one because I have space here down below. So negative 2x, negative 6, parentheses 2 equals 0. Negative 2x, negative 12 equals 0. Bring the 12 over and make it a positive 12. So we're left with negative 2x equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 2. 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. So my answer is negative 6, comma, 2. Negative 6, comma, 2. Now on a test or a quiz, be sure and check your answer. Also, you just totally found out if you were to graph these two lines where they would intersect at negative 6 on the x-axis, positive 2 on the y-axis, right there. Right there is where they would intersect if you were to graph these two linear equations. Okay, pretty cool stuff, guys. All right, number 16. <coughs> now, you're welcome to eliminate your x's or your y's. If you eliminate your y's, you have to multiply the top by a 2 and the bottom by a 5. For me, I like this one-step stuff. All that I have to do is multiply the bottom equation by 3. That gives me a 9. I've got negative 9 here. So that's what I'm going to do. So my top equation stays the same. Negative 9x positive 5y equals 1. Now, 3 times 3 would be 9x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6y. 3 times 2 is a positive 6. Okay, let's combine those. These cancel out. Positive 5, negative 6, that's negative 1y. I'm just going to put negative y. 1, positive 1, positive 6 is 7. If negative y equals 7, then y equals negative 7. Now, let's pick up our negative 7. Come over here. There's some room I can show my work here, so I'm going to substitute negative 7 in for y over here. You could have put negative 7 in for y in any of these other equations. It does not matter. Well, let's see. Negative 2 times a negative 7 is a positive 14. I'll bring your 14 over and make it a negative 14. 3x equals negative 12. If uh, you, I have $2, you pay off part of your $14 debt, you still owe me 12. To 
divide both sides by 3 and x equals negative 4. So my ordered pair would be negative 4 comma negative 7. Okay. On a test or in a quiz, please check your answer. Please, please, please learn to check your answers on a test or a quiz. Here we don't have to because we have the answers in front of us. But it's good practice to learn to do that, okay? Now, um, also, don't, don't forget, you actually, you actually found where these two lines intersect. Negative 4 on the x-axis, negative 7 on the y-axis. So they intersect right here, okay? All right. Last problem in this section before we go on to a different section. Now, in this one here, you're welcome to eliminate the x's. You have to multiply the top by a 3 and the bottom by a 7, and you would want one of these to be negative. If you didn't use a negative, you'd have a positive 21, a positive 21, so you could make it a negative 3, or you could make it a negative 7. I'm not going to do that, though. I notice I've got a nice... <coughs> slide that over here. 
here, I guess. And let's see what else we can do here. All right, we gotta go up a little bit. So the X intercept is negative 12 and a half, this is 10. So 11, 12, and then a half. So there's the X intercept or the y-intercept, excuse me. Now the x-intercept, negative two times zero is zero, so three x minus zero is three x. Divide by three and we get one, we get eight and one third. So the x-intercept is seven, eight, and then barely over to a third right here, okay? So we're gonna sketch that line, and it looks like they're gonna intersect right here. And that looks like five, negative five to me, five on the x-axis, negative five on the y-axis. So five, negative five would be the answer, okay? Now, let's solve this using either elimination or, or linear combination or substitution. So here, here we go. Then 
here 8 times 0 is 0, so I have 14x minus 0, which is 14x equals 2. Divide by 14 and we get 1 7th. You can see this is not 2 divided by 14, it's 2 14ths. Reduce that and you get 1 7th. As you can see, that's really, really difficult to grab. I mean, really hard. So that's the best we can do there. And, and that's why graphing is a really good method but it doesn't give out perfect answers unless you're using a graphing calculator, okay? So it looks like they're going to intersect about right here. That's over about half. And it's up almost to the top. I'll say 0.9. Let's see how close we were to the real answer. Um, well, 5 sevenths is, is very close to 1 half. 5 seventh is 0 0.7, 0 0.5, so decently close, and 0 0.9 is almost 1, so not bad. Now let's solve this using either linear combination or substitution. Now for me, I do not want to use substitution. I never, ever want to use substitution unless I have to. When there's, when there's not a variable by itself, because if you try to get x by itself, or x by itself, or y by itself, or y by itself, you're going to end up getting fractional expressions, something like y equals, you know, I don't know, 2 sevenths x minus 5 sevenths, and you got to substitute that back into the other equation. It's a mess. So I will never use substitution unless the directions tell me to when I don't have a variable all by itself, okay? So having said that, I'm stuck with linear combination now. We can eliminate the y's, multiply the top by 8, and the bottom by 5 gives you 40 and negative 40. But I'm looking at the 7 and the 14. I'm just going to multiply the top equation by 2, and that gives me a negative 14. So negative 14x, 2 times 5, positive 10. 2 times 0 is 2, or 0. That's funny. 0. Now bring your bottom equation over. 14x negative 8y equals 2. These cancel. Positive 10, negative 8, that's positive 2. 0 plus 2, or 0 positive 2 is 2. Divide both sides by 2. y equals 1. That checks. Now where the y is right here, I'm going to substitute 1. So 14x negative 8 times positive 1 equals 2. Let's solve for x now. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. Bring your 8 over and make it positive. So we're left with 14x equals 10. Now divide both sides by 14 and we get 10 over 14. But you must reduce that. 2 goes into both of those. 5 sevenths. So x equals 5 sevenths. And that checks right there. Okay. Hope this helps, guys. All right, let's continue on to our last two, 20, uh, 25, and 26. Now, the directions for these two say, <clears throat> how many solutions does each linear system have? Let me say those directions again. How many solutions does uh, 25 and 26 have? So you're not trying to solve, do you understand? You're simply going to tell me it has one solution, or it has no solution, or it has infinite solutions. Do you understand? That's all they want you to do, so you don't have to do a ton of work on these. I mean, as soon as you can tell, then you're good. Okay, to go ahead and stop. Well, I'm going to use substitution because there's a y all by itself. So y, I'm going to do this over here, y equals 12 negative 3x. I picked up the 3x, brought it over, made it negative. So where the y is here, I'm going to substitute 12 minus 3x. Take your 2 and multiply it through. Positive 24, negative 6x equals 4. Here's your 2x terms right here. A positive 2 and a negative 6 is a negative 4x. Bring down your positive 24. That equals 4. Um, and right away we can stop. We can see we're going to get a number out. I mean, bring your 24 over. That's a negative 24. So you get negative 4x equals negative 20. We can stop. We're going to get a number out for x. So if we're going to get a number out for x, some number, but hashtag number. If we're going to get a number out for x, then we're definitely going to put a number in here and get out a number for y. So there's no way we have no solution. There's no way we have infinite solutions. We have one solution. It's very obvious. Look, students, the only time you're going to get no solution or infinite solutions, remember, is if all of your x's and y's cancel out.
That's the only way. So this has one solution. 26, same thing. You don't have to solve it completely. Just decide whether it has one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. I'm going to use linear combination. I'm going to multiply the top equation by a 2. Now if I do that, that gives me a positive 12. And a positive 12 and a positive 12 aren't going to cancel out. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 2. So my top equation becomes negative 12x. Positive 2y, watch your signs. Negative times the negative is a positive. And the negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Now your bottom equation stays the same. 12x, 12x negative 2y equals 3. These cancel, these cancel. 0 equals negative 7. Now, did all of your x's and y's cancel out? Yes. So you know you're not going to have one solution. You're going to have no solution or infinite solutions. Next, you say to yourself, self, do I have a true or a false statement here? Well, it's false. So you have no solution for an answer. Now, I feel like it's real important that I also solve this for you using substitution so you can see it. So I'm going to get this y all by itself. So I have negative y equals Bring your 6x over, make it negative 5, negative 6x. The, the negative is still with the y. Now go through and change all of your signs. Negative became positive, positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive. Now where the y is. Where the y is right here, I'm going to substitute negative 5 plus 6x.